day now weary in your well doing for you shall reap if you fail not wait on the lord and be a good courage for you shall reap if you fail not Sometimes you feel like you're worse in vain When it looks like you've seen the sun, here comes the rain You try your best to wear a smile, but you're hurting so don't you dare give up, you keep holding on. Be not weary in your well-doing, for you shall reap if you fail not. Wait on the Lord and be a good courage for you shall reap if you fail not ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all take all the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. Amen. I'm stopping there. Now, what I want you to look at is what the verse has said. Sometimes there's a, an old song that says, are we walking into the enemy's camp, laying our weapons down, shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground? We've got to be strong in the power of his might. Prove to the enemy we are the army of the Lord, and we won the victory. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you guys, every single one of y'all, you need to get dressed. You need to get dressed. Some of y'all walk with the Lord in your pajamas. Some of you walk barefooted. Some of you walk with no armor whatsoever. And I'm not fussing at you. I'm using a fussing tone to get through to you because I love you. And I don't like seeing any of you get attacked. And a couple of you have been attacked this week big time. And this is what God gave me. I didn't know what I was going to talk about until last night. And boy, he really whipped it on me on this one with the confirmations following. So it sounds like God wants y'all to put up your dukes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't want his people to have glass jaws. You know what that means when you have a glass jaw. Somebody could just slightly slap you and you're out cold. That's a glass jaw. No. No, no, no. We're not going to have the devil knocking your knees together in fear. Tying your emotions up in knots. We're not going to have that. 
So I'm going to teach y'all how to fight. Now, I never learned how to fight. But I know one thing, when I got angry enough and I was up to there with it, when I had enough, all of a sudden I did things I didn't know how to do. I put a hurting on some folks. This is when I was a kid. I don't fight it. When I was an adult, when I was in high school, fighting stopped. This was in junior high and elementary school. That's where fighting belongs when it comes to kids. All right. But when you become an adult, you put away childish things. You pick up the things of God and you fight in the spirit realm. That's a much more important fight. But there are times when you need to fight because you've had enough. It's time out for being a sucker, for being a punk for the devil. It's time out for that now. God called you to be mighty men of valor, mighty women of valor, mighty men of God, mighty women of God. You're going to be part of this army. You know what God told some of the men? When he was caught, when he was uh, gathering the folks together to, to fight the war, when he was pulling them in, um, out of Egypt, and he was getting ready to tell them, go in and possess the land. Time to fight. Fight for what I've already given you, but you got to put up the fight. What did God tell them? He said, those who just got married, go home and make your wives happy. Those who have just planted your whatever and you got to tend your field and your crops, go back home. And those of you who are afraid, go home. So I want to ask you, are you going to live the rest of your life afraid? Or are you going to put your foot down? See, one of your feet ought to be going down on the ground saying, no more. While the other foot needs to be going up in the devil's behind. See, now you may not know how to throw a punch, but you know how to say this name. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop, cease, and desist right now in the name of Jesus. Memorize those little phrases. Those little phrases can make the difference between a demonic onslaught and peace and safety. Now, some of you have experienced, like I have, the dogs attacking you or charging you, and you binding them in the name of Jesus, and they stop. In real life, not in your dreams, in real life. Now, demons respond to the word of God, praising God, and the name of Jesus. You hear me? You got to wield the weapons. You can't leave the weapons in the garage. When you drive out of your garage, your weapons ought to be with you, on you, in your mouth, in your mind, on your chest, in your hands, on your feet. Not in the garage collecting dust. Wake up. You are God's people. You are a peculiar generation. You are royalty. Don't act like paupers. Don't act like wimps. Don't act like victims. Don't act like the bully folks out there to get beat up all the time. Don't allow yourself to be beat up on. Don't take it. No, that's one thing you don't take. You take the correction, you take it, you can make it. But when it comes to the devil, you fake it till you make it. And when I say fake it, you say the words. You go through the motions until you mean it in your heart. But don't sit there and just let the devil rake the coals over your behind. No. I raised you better than that. All right. Now, we're going to go. Oh, I got to say this one thing. I want you to hear this. You know when he says, quenching the darts? Mm, mm, mm. That one hit me like a ton of bricks last night. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all, not some, 
all the fiery darts of the wicked. How do you quench fire, y'all? You douse it with water, don't you? You got the living water of God right at your immediate disposal. When Satan throws those fiery darts at you to set you on fire, set your emotions on fire, burn up your faith, burn up your hope, extinguish your beliefs. You stand there and get the living water of God and douse that flame and say, no, buddy, ain't happening here. Refuse to accept it. Refuse to be a moving target for the enemy. Don't let the devil do target practice on you. Okay. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Does that include you? You gonna go for the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils see all seducing spirits don't always have to do with sex seducing spirits ain't always about watching something on the internet or looking at magazines or going to x-rated movies or playing with yourself no seducing spirits can seduce you into doing stupid seduce you into being stupid seduce you into being stuck on stupid and seduce you from unsticking yourself from stupid. And anytime you go for the devil's lies, you're going for his seduction. The devil is the master of seduction. What is another word for, this, for seduction? Persuasion. Don't be persuaded to believe lies. Whatever the devil tells you is for your harm. Psych! I don't care how much truth is in it. When the devil mixes his lies with truth, guess what? You ignore it. You turn a deaf ear to that crap. When he tells you you're depressed, when he tells you you're angry, when he jerks your emotions around and make you feel intimidated, when he sits you down on the chair with your thumb in your mouth and makes you feel worthless. It's a lie from the pit. That's not from God. When he, when he bombards you with guilt, on top of guilt, on top of condemnation, on top of guilt, that's a lie from the pit. Kick that crap to the curb. You don't receive anything from the devil. The devil takes a spoon and says, now open wide. And you're sitting there like a like a, a mannequin on his lap, opening your mouth, waiting for him to shove his crap in your mouth. No. No. Oh. Okay. Help me, Father. I don't want folks thinking I'm yelling at them. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that means lack of self-control. That means your emotions go everywhere, tipsy-turvy, topsy-turvy, upside down, inside out, and backwards, however the devil wants to jerk you around. That's what incontinent means. Means that when you feel it, you say it. When you feel it, you do it. When you feel it, you act it. When you think it, you become it. And you just have no control. Like pee-peeing and poo-pooing on yourself. You, I mean, why bother with a diaper? You're going to mess all over yourself before you even get it on. Because you have no control. Fears. 
despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form, this is the bottom line right here, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, picture me with a vacuum cleaner. Now, I've got a dirty carpet. I want the carpet clean looking like new. So I get the vacuum cleaner. This is what you guys do with God. I get the vacuum cleaner. Plug it in and I turn it on. All I got to do is flip and switch, push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. I don't want to do too much else. That's good enough for me. But I'm going back and forth with this vacuum cleaner. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Over that dark spot. Carpet ain't coming clean. The vacuum is picking up the debris. But it can't clean my carpet. It can only remove the dirt. Listen to what I'm saying. It can remove the dirt, the particles, but the soil, the deep stain, the, the, all of the, the real filth that's deep down within cannot be removed by a vacuum. I don't care how much suction that vacuum has. If it practically sucks up the carpet itself, the stain remains. Listen, the stain remains. But I'm doing that thing all day long, getting frustrated with the vacuum because the vacuum can't get rid of the deep stains. Are you wondering what does that have to do with what we're talking about? You're going to hear it in a minute. Now, if I just go through a few extra steps, which takes work, takes effort, takes time, takes energy. Hmm and in some cases takes patience. I go through a few extra steps, maybe five extra steps, and I get the carpet cleaner solution, and I get the distilled water, and I get my shampooer, and I pour the water into the container, and I put the cleaner where it's supposed to go in its compartment. You hear me? And I pull that thing out. And now it's already been vacuumed to death. But now I really want to get rid of the deep stuff. So I grab the shampooer. And I get it all prepared. And when everything's measured right and I follow the instructions, the instruction manual, I plug it in because it has to have power in order to run. And I flip the switch and I go back and forth and back and forth. Oh my, what's happening now? Oh, it's different. Stain is starting to come up. Did you see that? Oh, how surprising. Why? You went to the right source. You're using the right equipment. You're pulling on the right avenue to get that stain out. That's what that was built for. This is what we do as born-again Christians. We dial, we call, we write, we text, we dial, we call, we write, we text each other. Each other. We spend two, three hours on the phone crying the blues waiting for that shoulder on the other end to make us feel better. But I don't care how much push and pull that vacuum, the stain cannot come out. Because we are not meant to remove one another's stains. We are not meant to cleanse each other's sins. We are not meant to purify each other's spirits. Change each other's mindsets. No man can change the spots of a leopard. No vacuum can remove the spots on a carpet. But. When you use the right equipment, you can get that stain out. 
Some of you, you need to go to the right equipment, to the right source. Only God can remove your insecurities. Only God can remove your anger. Only God can remove your resentment. Only God can clean away that jealousy. Only God can uproot that bitterness that's deep down inside that stains your whole being. Affects your whole attitude, your disposition. Only God can get down where nobody can see, including you, and make you white as snow. Remove all spots. Hmm. And you'll be without spot or wrinkle. Only God can clean a human spirit. Only God can comfort the hurting soul. Only God can put you back together again when your heart's been broken and fragmented. But no, you go to the vacuum cleaner because it's easy to dial a number. It's easy to text. That's a whole lot quicker than waiting on the Lord. The Lord had too many steps trying to get into his presence. We don't have time. This is a microwave age. Microwave food, microwave travel, microwave technology, and microwave religion. That's how we deny the power of God. You're upset. Somebody just ticked you off. What do you do? Pick up the phone. Don't you? Think about it. Think about it. What's your first thing you do? Pick up the phone. God's right there. You take too long, Lord. No offense, but you take too long. I got to talk to my homie. What up? You got time to talk? He got all the time in the world. Bad English, but you hear me. Yeah. <laughs> he waiting on you with bated breath so he can do what he loves to do. Roll up his sleeves and complete the work he's already done on the cross. Heal the broken heart. The potter wants to put you back together again, but no, it takes too long. I need to talk now. Oh, but, but, I, no, that's all right. I just, I just watch something on TV and forget my troubles. You ain't going to forget your troubles. They're still there because you're still there. Troubles ain't going nowhere. The vacuum ain't going to do jack. That stain you need removed, only God can remove. The rug shampoo, baby. That's what you need. The power of cleansing. The power of of healing, the power of deliverance. Let me share something with you real quick. Some of you have heard this story before, so if you get bored, go to the bathroom, get some coffee, whatever. But some of y'all need to hear this again because you forget too fast. Laying your weapons on the ground. Okay. Years ago, I went out with a buddy of mine. We had dinner together. It wasn't a date. We were just running buddies. And he said something. He said a little snide remark. You know how friends, you know, throw little digs at each other. <laughs> something I did got on his nerves and he had to comment on it. Now, I didn't like the comment. Comment wasn't deep, but I didn't like it. I go home. I mean, you know, we had a nice evening. We forgot about it, but I didn't forget about it. I went home. And I tried to get that thing off my mind. Now, I didn't pick up the phone and call somebody. You know what he said to me? No. First thing I did was go to the source of my power. And I said, Lord, it pays to ask God questions, y'all. I said, Lord, why is that bothering me so much? Right? <laughs> Yeah. Why is that bothering me so much? 
And what happened? All of a sudden, I hear one word come at me. And I knew it had to be God because I didn't see the connection. I didn't even get it. And he said one word. And the word was this, rejection. And I'm pausing and I'm thinking and I'm trying to do the math. I ain't getting it. And I said, well, what does rejection have to do with what he said? And I said, okay, Lord, I don't get it. But if that's the case, that it's rejection. Rejection has had too much power over my life. I'm tired of it. And I'm asking you to get rejection out at the root. Was I on the phone talking to my buddies, complaining about his snide remark? What I should have said, what I should have done, how I should have acted? Huh? No. I was talking to the shampooer, the one that could get the deep stain out. I was talking to the specialist, to God. Now, when I asked him to get it out at the root, I also added, please don't leave any crumbs. Don't leave any tentacles. Get it all out. Every, every inch, every cell, every molecular, get it all out. Right? And as soon as I said it, and then I added, I cast out the root of rejection in the name of Jesus. That's all I said. Didn't say nothing deep. And I started feeling, I'm sharing this with you so you see how practical God is. I'm feeling all of this welling up in my gut. I'm in my living room, y'all. I'm not at the church altar. I'm in my living room. God is where you are. And I'm sitting there feeling all this churning in my stomach. And next thing I know, I'm going to cry. All oh, this emotional pain. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on? I felt like a volcano beginning to erupt. And all that was starting to come out was emotional pain, deep-seated emotional pain, insecurities, hurts, all this emotional pain welling up and I'm crying and I'm sobbing and next thing you know, this is the way I sounded. It's not going to sound pretty. This is what, this is what I did for over an hour and a half after having just finished a full glass of orange juice. Nothing came up, but I dry heaved for an hour and a half. And afterwards, howl like a woman in travail. And the whole town went, ah! Ah! And I kept doing it over and over and over. God, this is God now. This is the deep cleaner. I ain't on the phone trying to t uh, flip on a vacuum cleaner to, rem to remove this. I went to God himself. And when I got through, and I, I just kept going over and over and over, and I'm like, come out, come out, oh God, thank you. And I'm like, oh, oh. when that thing was over, and I got through howling, this is the way I sound, turn away from the computer so I don't bust my speakers. Oh, I sounded like this. Ah! I sounded so weird to myself, I didn't know what to do. But I went with it. Because I knew he knew what he was doing. When I got through, the mirror didn't agree with me. My clothes didn't agree with me. But I felt in my spirit as if I had lost a hundred pounds of dead weight. Gone. And from that day to this, my level of self-confidence, my level of self-assuredness, all of the inner strength, strengthening on the inner man. I was so much stronger, so much bolder, so much more confident, so much more mellow. And I wasn't so easily jerked around by every wind and doctrine by the slate of man. Listen, life nor the devil can whip you around, can jerk you around, 
can jack you up once you start getting healed by God. Once you start getting that cleansing, that uprooting, that deliverance, life nor the devil has any any control over you like they did. Life is going to affect you emotionally. You're not a, a robot. You're going to feel. But the hurts aren't going to cut so deep like they did because now he's, God is shielding you. Your shield of faith. Everything is building up. Your armor is getting stronger and stronger because of God, not because of the vacuum cleaner. All right. I'm saying all this to say to you, trust in God. Rashad sang it in his song. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Don't turn tail and run, not now. No, trust yourself in God's love. Trust yourself in God's hands. Trust yourself in God's wisdom. Trust yourself in God's power. You hear me? Yeah, we go to each other. We get encouragement. That's what we're supposed to do. Get prayer. Not get on the phone, yak, 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 yak. Get prayer. Get, you know, get somebody to get the word in you. Whatever. Testify about what God's able to do. That's fine. When that phone gets off the hook, you ought to be in God's face. That's the bottom line right there. It's God. Not me. Not Aretha. Not uh, uh, Renee. Not Lynn, not my mother, not my father, not my husband. You know how many times I came home crying? I didn't go to my husband for his comfort. I went in the bedroom or the bathroom so God could handle me. My husband couldn't do squat compared to what God could do. He could be there for me. What else can he do? That's like somebody trying to comfort somebody who just lost a, a, a loved one to, to, uh, to death, to a, a terminal illness. I don't care how much you hug him and say, I'm sorry for your loss. That's not going to remove the pain. When my father died and I said, God, this was all about getting him to heaven. And we have done mission accomplished. I do not want to mourn that. But since mourning is natural, I want to get it over with and celebrate what you did for me and my father. The Lord helped me cry that crap out in one night. I cried like a crazy woman. But when the crying was over, I felt that peace that passes all understanding only God can restore mourning with joy. Only God can turn your mourning into dancing. Only God. The scripture says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Only God can do that. Not the man kill cleaner, not your body on the phone. Stop turning to man for what God can do. <sighs> Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us to reach out to you, Father. Help us, Lord, to lean on you like never before in these last days. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Move on us through your spirit, Father. Strengthen us on the inner man. Remind us to stay dressed every day in our armor. In the name of Jesus, remind us to have our breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is the word of God. Remind us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to draw on your power, to draw on your strength, to draw on your healing, to draw on your love. In Jesus' name, I pray. 
And Father, I ask you to reveal yourselves to, to yourself to those who have a hard time believing. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us on our weak side. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord, for the work you did on Calvary, for being there to heal the broken heart, to heal our minds, bodies, spirits, and soul. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.